Hey Ocean Crew, welcome to my channel. My name is Karen and I'm from Ocean Chicks Films. This week on Final Girls of Horror, we are reviewing the movie Waxwork from 1988. Just so you know, there will be spoilers in this review. So if that's not cool, click off now and we'll catch you on the next one. Waxwork from 1988, a comedy horror written and directed by Anthony Hickox. The strange owner of a waxworks museum in town lures teenagers into a twisted nightmarish fate. There's a huge cast starring Zach Galligan as Mark, he was in Gremlins, Deborah Foreman, who's Sarah, she was in Valley Girl, Michelle Johnson, who plays China, was in The Love Boat, Dana Ashbrook, who plays Tony, he was in Twin Peaks, David Warner, plays David. He was in The Omen. I didn't realize that till I looked it up. Patrick McNee plays Sir Wilfred, and of course he was in James Bond, Magnum P.I., Heart to Heart, Love Boat, Murder, She Wrote, and on and on it goes. So are waxwork movies a subgenre? Because it should be, right? There's a lot of these films. So this film was inspired by the movie Wax Works from 1924 and parts of the Mystery of the Wax Museum from 1933, as well as House of Wax with Vincent Price. And of course, we have to give honorable mention to House of Wax with Paris Hilton. Now the film starts out with this uh, big old house in a residential neighborhood, and this very quirky, eccentric, weirdly dressed man is standing up front, and he lures the teens into the house where he has a uh, wax museum. So the teens go there at night, and when they get inside, they see these horror scenes with uh, very realistic wax figures of human beings kind of displayed and set up. And they're all drawn to their own scene that speaks to them, and they go through this portal, they end up inside of the horror scene, and things come to life. And they end up being uh, killed by werewolves and monsters, that kind of thing, and then they're transformed back into wax figures themselves. So this Sir Wilfred guy, played by Patrick McNee, shows up to talk to Mark and tell him that his grandpa uh, and this David guy were friends, and they dug up all these ancient artifacts from uh, the top 18 most horrible people in the world, and David went rogue, took the artifacts, and used them in a pact, like a Haitian voodoo kind of ritual, uh, making a deal with the devil to, um, you know, rule the world. So he needs 18 bodies that he can uh, kill and preserve in wax and allow these evil people to um, inherit the bodies and then take over the world. And this movie definitely has a very cheesy, very 80s feel to it. And there's lots of uh, references to classic monsters and to movies in this film. And there's so many references that I'm gonna read them off. So they pay homage to Alien, Dawn of the Dead, Frankenstein, Godzilla, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, Jack the Ripper, The Lost Boys, Dracula, It's Alive, The Mummy, uh, Phantom of the Opera, and even Little Shop of Horrors, and I think there's even more in there too. So it's pretty crazy how much stuff they pack into this film. And in that respect, I think it's really good. The story is really well done. And the, act the acting, there's a huge cast with some big actors in there. The acting's a little bit cheesy for me, but the storyline is really good and the, the effects are really good too. It turns out that Mark figures out that when he's trapped in this realm, if he doesn't believe in it, he can step out of it. He won't be trapped in it. He can go back through the portal and escape. So he explains that to this last girl, the final girl, I guess you'd call her, that's left, that he's kind of interested in the end and she likes him. He tells her to do that, so they, they both end up escaping. So there was a few uh, scenes that I really liked and a couple of fun facts that I found. So first thing is there's uh, the final girl I told you about. She Her realm that she was, the world that she was looking into was like swashbucklers and like I think a prince. And anyway, they take her into there and they're like whipping her. And there's a redhead guy and he's a 
the prince, I think, and he actually is the director. So that's pretty cool. Slipped himself in there. <laughs> and in the very, very first world, the first big scene that we see, uh, the girl that's popular in school and um, she's kind of the bad girl and her name's China and Mark's really, really, really interested in her, but she keeps shooting him down. She goes into this realm of vampires and she's dressed in this beautiful white dress and there's this big table, candelabra, all that kind of thing. And the head vampire um, is feeding her and she's lost her, her boyfriend actually is this sports jock guy. He's gone in somewhere, but she doesn't know where he is. And the vampire is forcing her to sit there with all these other people. She doesn't realize they're vampires yet. And they bring out the food and she's very into like French, words and you know exotic kinds of things she's trying to be you know bigger than she is they put the food and it's like this raw meat into a bowl cut into cubes but it looks gross and he says to eat and she's just staring at it like she's going to be sick and uh he he says you you have to eat it and she says oh it's like steak tartare and he's like sure yeah uh-huh that works eat it and she go he says do you want sauce on it and she's like oh i don't really like sauce but then he kind of coerces her and forces her so she says fine so it's like they're pouring blood on it it's just disgusting i was eating actually at the time and that was kind of ruined my appetite because it was gross <laughs> really gross and she ends up eating it or fakes eating it and the other people are just allowed to eat and they just devour it and then she ends up getting up and escaping into another room and she finds her boyfriend tied up to this table as though it's like a kitchen he's tied up to this table and his leg from that one leg from the knee down has been basically cut up <laughs> so they ate his leg oh so gross, but so really effective and well done. Makes you very uncomfortable. And it's just strange because he's still alive, but he's all tied up. It's as though he was a, a chicken or something, like an animal or something like that. So gross. Ah, oh, it's a really good scene though. And like I told you, I really liked the scene where Mark goes into the zombie world and it's like Night of the Living Dead or Dawn of the Dead, all in black and white. And he severs the hand off of the zombie and then that hand kind of crawls out of the burning house afterwards. I really like that scene too. There's lots going on here. Um, and it's, it is, it's a really cheesy, badly acted uh, horror film from the 80s. But if you like that kind of thing, I think you're gonna love this. It, it was pretty good, I would say, overall. Uh, for my review, I'm gonna give it three shark bites out of five. I think you should check it out if you haven't already or, or give it a rewatch if you watched it before. I had never seen it before. But it was it was a fun time. It was a fun time. I, I'd watch it again. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Now go to the other Final Girls of Horrors channels and watch their reviews of this film. I'll have them all linked in the description box below. And you know the drill. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up because it helps me a lot. And subscribe to the channel for more Final Girls of Horror and live streams and more of my interviews on Movie Talk as well as movie reviews. I just want to say thank you guys so much for stopping by. I love you all, and we'll see you again really soon. Bye, guys.